Hi everyone and welcome back for another episode in my first person shooter series. In the last episode we went through how to make the gun fully automatic and in the episode before that we started setting up how the gun should work and what changes need to be done to it. So I hope you've watched those two videos beforehand. We are now going to go and take a step back and look at making a user interface for our guns uh, before we go on and add in any more. Now, to do this, um, we're going to do a few things that require a bit more setup, but ultimately will help us out in the end. So, what I mean by that, the first thing we need to do is create our own player controller. Now, by default, the game uses a default uh, player controller, which isn't that great because it's, it's kind of locked off away and not easy for you to change and so forth. So, it's a lot better to create your own. And to create your own, um, I'm going to put mine in here, but you can put yours wherever you like. You want to go add new blueprint class. And one of the options on this list is the player controller. Now, a player controller is basically the thing that controls uh, actors and pawns. So this is a player controlled one. There are also AI controlled ones and or whatever else you want. So the player controller, click on that. And I'm going to call mine FPS controller. And you want to open it up. Okay, so this is where it should, what it should be. It should be pretty blank, nothing going on. Uh, it is invisible, it's not visible, so you don't have to worry about anything there. Um, what we do need to do, though, is tell the game to point to this controller instead of the default one. Now, you do that in this first person game mode. This is the game mode that the game uses. This is the first thing that gets loaded. Uh, at least as far as I'm aware, it's the first thing that gets loaded. And basically it tells the game how it should run. And one of the default ones when you open it up is uh, it will show you the classes that it runs. So it tells you what game session class, game state, player controller, player state, HUD, default, spectator, and so on and so forth. Okay. So one of these you saw was player controller. And if we choose the drop down here and choose our one, FPS controller, that will now point to and use the FPS controller blueprint that we just made. Click compile and close it. Now if we play the game, you can see it still works. That's because our FPS controller actually derives from the basic default player controller. But it just means that we can add stuff to it a lot easier now. So to do the HUD, we are going to create a widget. So I'm going to pick a place for this. I'm going to go in here, make a new folder. Uh, called UI and open it up now you may have seen me do this in a couple of videos before if you've watched my other videos but what I would strongly recommend you do for the user interface or HUD heads up display is to create a parent heads up display and then you slot in all the other windows and HUDs and bars and everything else into that parent it makes it a lot easier to control, a lot easier to manage, and a lot easier to uh, work with. So what we can do is go add new user interface in that section there. You'll see widget blueprint. And I'm going to call it heads up display. And we don't need to do anything to this. You can open it up, but you can see it's just a canvas. I'm not going to do anything to this just yet. Um, we need to make another widget and that will be for actual ammo counter. So add new user interface widget blueprint and call it ammo counter. So the ammo counter is the widget that we need to edit most. Now widgets by default come with a canvas panel. A canvas panel basically gives you absolute layout of what you want to happen on the screen. So if I plonk it there, it will appear there on the screen. Now I don't want to do this for the ammo counter. Instead, I want to get rid of this and replace it with a size box. So I can click on the canvas panel in the hierarchy in the bottom left here and hit delete. And in the palette just above that is all our tools that we can put into our widget. And I just want to put in size box and drag that into the hierarchy down below. Now size box is basically a box or panel that you can determine the size of and it will make things fit into that size. So I'm going to go over here onto the right hand side to the details panel and you'll see width override and height override. I'm going to tick both of these and we'll type in some values. So my width override I'm going to do as, uh, let's do 300 and then the height override will do uh, 100. Let's see how that looks. 
Now for the screen here to do display how it looks, we need to change it from fill screen in the viewport to desired. Now clicking that will change this this green box area to the size of this size box. Okay, so this is the dimensions of it on the screen. You want to stretch it, this is exactly what we say here. Um, I'm going to make mine a little bit fatter, so I'm going to go 150. There we go. And like so. The next thing I want to do into the size box is a vertical panel, or vertical box. So I can type in vertical box, and drag that into your size box. And it should be indented in like so to indicate that's inside of the size box. Now because it is inside the size box, it will fit it. Okay, it will go, we've told it to fill, it will fill the whole thing. A vertical box basically means its contents will be stacked vertically. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're going to have the name appear at the top. And underneath that, we're going to have the ammo counter. So we need a text box. So type in text and not text box, sorry, text. Text box is very different. That's user inputs. We don't want that. We want this box. This text, sorry. Going to get you really confused, unfortunately. Sorry. Um, so drag the text onto vertical box. And there it appears. So the text block, you can see it appears at the top. And we want to center align this, so go over here and we'll see horizontal alignment, we can hit the center button. Next, we want to click on uh, horizontal box. And drag that into the vertical box, not the text block. And the horizontal box, it basically does the same thing as vertical box, but horizontally. So everything I put in it will appear next to each other. Now it's quite important we do this because we want the different elements of the text to be changeable. Um, it'll make sense once we get started, so let's just start dragging stuff into it. So again, drag more text boxes into the horizontal box. There's one, two, three. Okay, we just need three. The first one, click on. It's best also, always, by the way, to click on it in the hierarchy rather than the viewport. It's more accurate and you're guaranteed to get the one you want. So I click on text block, uh, the first text block, and I'm just going to put in key key or hashtag hashtag or whatever you want to call that, um, and hit enter. Next one is going to be a forward slash. I'm going to do a space first, then a space, and then the next text block again. That hashtag hashtag or pound pound or whatever you want to call it. Okay. 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 So this horizontal box, you can see, it's got these three items in it. And you can see how it's going to work, basically. This first one's going to change to show the ammo that's currently in the gun. This is going to show us how much how much ammo we've got in total. Um, for this, I want to make this all appear on the right. So I'm going to click on the right alignment on the horizontal box. So I click on horizontal box and click the right alignment. And it'll align it to the right. Now, I also want to make this first number bigger than the little, the other number so i'm going to click on that one and in the appearance you'll see font and if it might be closed like this you just expand it open like so and for size there i'm going to change that to say 48 like that okay so this number now looks bigger than this one which is quite important because that's the one probably the player wants to see the most so this one would be the gun name this would be the ammo we've currently got in the gun and this is the ammo we've got in total um okay so let's code some of this now so to code this you go onto the graph editor which is on the top right so click on graph and you get pre-construct construct and tick to begin with uh which want construct for now and on the construct what we're going to do is we're going to get the player's gun store that as a variable so we can access it later for those uh, various text blocks so to do this we need to get the player character let's give it that tick and the other one is out of the way get so you want to get the player character and then we're going to cast it to the first person character or whatever you've named your main player character okay so we're going to check that they're actually playing this thing um, and then from there we can start accessing its uh, components. So as first person character we want to access its gun component. Let's see, get gun. And the gun 
we can then get the child actor of the gun so get actor and you'll see get child actor and that'll get the gun so this is the component this is the actor the, the component saying is child to two so this actually gets the actual gun that we have okay um with this we want to get the the actual gun itself because this child actor has various components to it um so first of all let's cast this to the gun parent so drag that out and do gun cast a gun parent and hook it up like so and now we can access this actor's children or component sorry and one of those components is the actual gun itself um or i can leave it as is and just go like this and go um promote to variable and i can name this one equipped gun so let's walk through that again so on the construct basically when the widget is constructed onto the screen we're going to get the player character we're going to check it's the first person character and access it and we're going to access its child component and then from that child component we're going to access the actor that's attached to that component we're going to then check through that this is actually the gun parent and it is actually part of that and then we're going to store that gun parent as the equipped gun now remember all of our other guns like the fully automatic and semi-automatic and any other guns we make are going to be child uh, actors of the ch uh, of the gun parent so this will work for all of them okay and click compile now to show you how this works um you want to go back and double check on your gun parent you want a gun name okay i may have added that let me delete that so you can get how i edited it before click on the plus variable type in gun name and this will be a text uh variable because it'll be text that can be shown on the screen and click compile okay now with that gun name I can now access that gun name through this variable so i'll go back to the designer and click on the top text block the one that's going to be actual the name of the gun i am go to bind on the text content and you'll see equipped gun as a sub object property and then you should see gun name click on that and that's how that works so now that will show whatever we've typed in as the gun name now let's go into uh, the ammo counters so these work pretty similarly but we have to change something about it because the ammo counter so if i go back to gun parent this ammo current and ammo max you can see they're integers not texts so on the ammo counter i can't click on bind uh where are we uh can't click on bind here equip gun and see the ammo counter okay so what i need to do is tell it to change the integer into text so you do that with a binding so click on bind and click create binding and it'll make a sort of function up and the function is pretty simple you just drag your equipped gun out as a variable just get and then from there you want to get the ammo current and then from there you can just drag straight into here and it'll convert to text uh, for you i'm gonna click compile and you can name it if you like i like to name them so i'm gonna say uh get ammo current text and click compile now if I go back to that designer you can see that it's bound to that function now okay now I'll do it exactly the same but this time for ammo max so I click on ammo max create binding drag the equipped gun out choose get ammo max and then drag that onto the return value and again i'm going to name it so i know exactly what i've got here there we go okay okay so that will now change in game based on whatever gun we've got equipped to make this show up on the screen though we need to put it onto our heads up display widget so let's go back to it so your heads up display widget we made earlier and as i said you want this to be the sort of parent of all the widgets you put into it so you just chuck them all onto here so the ammo counter i can drag that out and i can choose whereabouts on the screen i want it to display okay so i want mine to display in the bottom right hand corner 
Now, it's quite important to see that this little sort of flower shape here, this is the anchor. And basically what it means is that this is being positioned relative to its anchor point. So if I want the bottom right corner, it's a good idea to change the anchor point to be the bottom right. That way it will always be in the bottom right. So if I go on to anchors on the top right in the details panel, you'll see different locations where you can place the anchor. I'm going to place mine in the bottom right, like so. And if you looked carefully, you would have seen the position, position X and position Y change based on the anchor changing location. Okay, But that means it's always going to be that relative distance from the corner, which is exactly what you want. Uh, we're done here, so click Compile. And you get an error, and the error is... Uh, oh yeah, Ammo Counter. So the reason why it's not working is if we go back to Ammo Counter. Uh, let's go back into Ammo Counter. And click on graph. If you clicked on the equipped gun, I think it's equipped gun, you want to click instance editable. Tick that and click compile again. And you go back into heads up display, compile, and it should clear. Okay. Uh, the reason why is basically it wants you to be able to, because you're making it very confusingly, you're making it an instance of it. So you want to make sure that you can edit and change it because it's being not we're not putting it directly we're sort of making a copy of it onto the heads up display so we want to make sure that we can change the certain values on it uh it's very fiddly but that's essentially what we've got to do when you see that message okay so it's all going to show up in heads up display we now need to make the heads up display actually show and that's what we've done our controller for so if we go back to our controller and click on open full blueprint editor um what I'm going to do here is go begin play and we're going to create the widget create widget and we're going to choose the heads up display that's the class return value we're going to promote to variable good idea to do that because then you can access the HUD and change it uh, wherever you like in code it makes it a lot easier to access so I'm going to call it heads up display and then from there, you want to add to viewport. Like so. Click Compile. And if we click Play, it will show in the, the bottom right hand corner. Now, I already pre named my gun, but you can do so. All we do is you go onto each one of your guns. So I'm going Gun, Full Automatic. And if you click on the top parent component, Gun Full Automatic brackets self. Click on that, you'll see the default variables. And you can see a assault rifle I've named the gun name there. Um, so I can go mega gun, for example. Click compile, and click play, and you can see mega gun change. Now the ammo counter isn't going down. Um, we're going to change that quickly so we can see that working. Um, all you do for that is go into your gun parent. And at the end of the montage, play for fire bullet. So open up your fire bullet function. It's this thing, which we did in episode one. And after the montage play, you want to uh, decrement. So double, double minus. You go decrement integer. And you drag on the ammo current to that. And if you click play, you'll see the number go down. Now notice it will go down into negatives. Uh, that's because we need to do a reloading mechanic, uh, so we'll do that in the next video. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see the next video now, you can do over on Patreon. Uh, subscribers can get to see videos two weeks ahead of time. So a big thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, if you do like these videos and you have liked what I've done in the past and want to see what else I can do, um, all your support is greatly appreciated on YouTube. However, I do have a Patreon set up as well where you can support me even further. Money donated by yourselves will help me make better videos and better content, uh, and more frequently hopefully. Plus it will help me develop my own projects. Currently I'm in a project at the moment and I'll hopefully be able to share that with you uh, sh soon. Um, if you do so, to, uh, choose to donate and subscribe to us on Patreon, uh, you do get access to videos two weeks ahead of time, plus there are many other rewards available to you too. So head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, and uh, thank you for all your support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.